Uh, hi, I'm Hugh Beckinson. I want to talk about adding batching to the set to set model from before. So this is kind of like version three, I guess. So in the first version, there was like no batching. Uh, time steps were not batched, and the batch but was not batched. So it was like processing some of the time and time step at the time. So and then in version two, it kind of added like time step batching, and also. Uh, made the module uh, more idiomatic by torch. And then in this one, I kind of want to do some actual real batching. Uh, so I've kind of got the two files here. Like This is the old one. So they're all kind of on the GitHub, and I'll put the links into the YouTube. Um, so this is kind of like the version 2 one, right? So the modules are kind of idiomatic by torch. Like we've got these module classes driving from module and assigning the modules to them. Um, but we've still got like looping over individual examples here for an example in enumerate training. So I want to get rid of that and I hope it should run faster. Actually, it does run faster. Uh, so like if, whoops, uh, uh, this one, right? Uh, if we run this new version, uh, it runs quite a lot faster than the old one. Um, and it seems to work quite nicely. So cool. Um, OK. so. Like, that's the old one. This is the new one. So the new one uh, doesn't have any loop over the examples, right? We've got a loop over the epochs, but there's no loop over examples. I've still left this encode function here, but it doesn't have any loops inside it. So the only loop we've got is over epochs. Uh, now, you might say, but wouldn't we have to loop over batches? Yeah, that's true. So I'm still simplifying. So basically, since uh, we've only got, like, 16 examples, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just creating a single batch containing all the examples. Uh, so like, I'm going to put a link to the code in the YouTube, but basically, um, yeah, here we've got encode a batch and decode a batch, and like n is really low, so the things train first, right? It's basically like 16, so we've just got like 16 size batches. Um, and something I also did at the same time is I basically made everything into torch, into torch stuff rather than NumPy, right? So um, basically we've got a long tensor with the encoder batch and a long tensor with the decoder batch. Right, so the the encoder batch has the character indexes uh, for the first incoming language and then the decoder batch has the character um, encodings for the for the um, target language. So we've got incoming is English and outgoing is, is French like here, right? So we've got incoming is I'm glad, were, and then the outgoing is like uh, je suis ravi. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, so what, yeah, so moved everything to be torch, got rid of the for loop. So then I, I guess the main challenge is just kind of like handling all the dimensions and stuff and views and stuff, right? So uh, here in the new one, when we're running the encoder, we simply pass in the encoder batch. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much unchanged. I'm not converting it from NumPy anymore because it's already a torch, and I don't need any view to give it a batch size because it's already got a batch size. So that's really easy. So this encoder batch it is, what is it? It's, it's sequence length is the first dimension, and then batch size is the second. So that is exactly what uh, the RNN expects, so that's all okay. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of hacking around with views and stuff here. Um, basically, for the max, uh, basically, if we can make it all two-dimensional, uh, the tensor, then we can do the max, and then we can, like, unflatten it out. Uh, yeah, so before here, um, no, wait. The output of the encoder um, is like we've got like sequence length and batch size, um, and then the hidden size. Right. Let me just write that in here. Fred embedded is is like sequence length and then batch size, and then like I think hidden size. Right. This is kind of the dimensions. Right. Um, and then we want to multiply it by the embedding, and the embedding is going to be like uh, it's like input size, uh, hidden size, and we want to multiply it by the transpose of the embedding so that we can get back to the input size, which we can then look up in the um, 
the conversion table from the input encoding to the actual character so that we can print out the sentence. All right, now the, we're, do, we're using a matrix multiplication here to multiply the pred embedded with the embedded matrix. Now, matrix multiplication wants two matrices, right? so those should be both two-dimensional. So the embedding is okay, it's two-dimensional. Uh, but the pred embedded is not okay, it's three dimensional, right? So what do we do? So we basically use view to squash these two dimensions together, then we can do the matrix multiplication. So we've got pred embedded dot view, the minus one is going to squish everything together, hidden size on the inner dimension, that matches the hidden size of the embedding after the transpose, um, and then we can basically unflatten that with a, with a, with a second view. So then, that, then the pred here is unflattened at secular and batch size and um, input size, like V is input size, right? Uh, for the max, uh, basically similar idea, right? We do the max on the flatten. Actually, we don't have to do the max on the flatten, but I do. And then um, unflatten it. Um, so basically, handling the batches is mostly, a, mostly a, I found, was just like dealing with these various views and... and um, dimensions and stuff, and I embedded it, I, I put a whole bunch of print statements and stuff where you could run it in a debugger, I guess, uh, to handle that. And then it basically goes through, so that's the encoder. The decoder is also batched, actually, but we're, not, we're still not batching on time steps because each time step depends on the previous time step, and I can't think of a way of batching time steps, but I am batching over the examples, right? So in the decoder, in the previous version, we had like previous character and then each time we went through the time step loop we would update the previous character let me just show that uh, so we had a previous character this is just a single uh, encoded character so like it could be like 22 maybe that was a C and 25 maybe that's a T and then um, for the next time step we update it right and then in the new batched version basically the privacy batch is a, is a batch so it's like a vector that's batch size uh, long. Uh, okay, it's not a vector. It's, it's actually a matrix. Right? The one means we've got one time step. So we've got one time step uh, times batch size. So the privacy batch is uh, it's uh, sec len batch size, but the sec len is one. Right. So that's what this view is doing. Right. It means that the first dimension is one, which matches the fact that we've got one sec len. And then this is going to be the batch size. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much similar to the encoder. We've got a whole bunch of views and stuff to be able to handle the encoding modification and so on. Uh, for, for decoding the sentence into the actual stuff that we can print, I'm kind of doing that kind of like not really in any sort of batch way, just looping over. I think that's kind of OK. Um, but otherwise, it's fairly similar. So, and then that runs much faster. So, let's just run that, and then I think that's good for this. There we go. It runs. And it runs quite a lot faster. I, I'm basically printing every, uh, uh, it's too weird for me to say, but it's like every four or eight or something like epochs. Whereas before, I was like printing every two epochs. Print every eight epochs, right? Uh, and it's running fairly quickly. So, so that's cool. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you very much.